Welcome to Ask Al, presented by Quad Plus. Here's today's question. Why do drives create harmonics, and how do I eliminate them? So we'll address this in two parts. I'll, I'm going to talk a bit about harmonics, and I'm going to have Kent Wegley join us to talk about some of the things you can do to mitigate impacts of harmonics. So let's talk, start with the real simple scenario, uh, which would be a space heater connected into a 120 volt outlet. And you know you can see the waveform here, and you see the current waveform, and, and that's the particular problematic part of the of harmonics is non-sinusoidal current. So in the case of a space heater, uh, you see it, the current is rising proportional linearly with the voltage. And in that scenario, if I were to do a Fourier analysis to look at the harmonic spectrum, you would see just the fundamental frequency. And that's what we see at 60 hertz. Now, let's take the other extreme and look at what it would be with a square wave of current. And so here you can see the square wave of current with the sine wave voltage and the spectrum. You see all of these harmonics. And, and for pure sine wave, the perfect sine wave, it would be all of the odd harmonics going on to infinity. And what those higher frequencies do is they provide that leading edge on the current. So on the square wave, that very fast leading edge and then the very fast dropping edge. Because uh, at the end of the day, and, and fundamentally, frequency comes down to rate of rise. So the faster something's rising, the higher the frequency. Now, a perfect square wave is not practical. So let's look at what you'd see typically in the field. And this waveform is of a AC drive, a six pulse drive. Looks like it's probably running lightly loaded. And you'll see that you've got the two humps for on each cycle of current. And then if you look at the spectrum, you'll see predominantly the fifth and the seventh uh, and the 11th and the 13th. With a six pulse converter, what you'll see is every multiple of six plus minus one are the predominant harmonics that you'll see. And then you'll see that also gives you some voltage distortion. So we're running at about 75% current distortion and roughly 8% uh, voltage distortion in this scenario. I found a great tool online that can help you to, to understand how you can use sine waves and combining sine waves to create virtually any repetitive waveform you want. And so here you can see this is the tool. The link to the tool is in our video description. But here I can bring in the third harmonic. And you'll see here I start to bring in now the, the fifth harmonic the seventh, the ninth, and the eleventh. And you can see the impacts. And so you can move these, the, the content of the, each individual frequency around to see the impact on the waveform. The way this, then how this impacts your, your power supply, uh, let's just look at some electronics basics. And so here in this circuit, I'm just showing an inductor and, and a resistor. And, and I picked the value such that at 60 hertz, okay, it's a perfect voltage divider. And so I've got a 10 volt power supply and you'll see five volts coming out um, at our measuring point. Now, if I triple the frequency, okay, and that's, this is the next image, you'll see the inductor whose impedance is proportional to frequency, the impedance is two pi uh, times the frequency times the inductance value. So now I've got about a 1200, uh, 1200 ohm impedance and I still have my 377 ohm resistor. And so now I'm only seeing a quarter of the voltage across that resistor, so at that measure point. And so now if we apply this to a, uh, a typical power distribution system, and you'll see in this drawing, we've got the, the supply transformer, which is 13.8 kV to 4160, and then we have our 4160 um, to 480 volt transformer, and then we have our variable speed drive load. Um, so let's bring in the fundamental current. You can see here that you know, I'm showing the current flow, and so that current flow and the path of that current to the drive is creating voltage drops at 60 hertz. Now, if I bring in the next harmonic, you'll see that it's flowing along the same path, but now it's, it's starting to get different voltage drops because of the difference of different impedance values. And so if I look at my measuring point, I'm starting to see a bit of voltage distortion, maybe substantially less than what I'm seeing at the 3, 13 point or substantially more than what I'm seeing at the 13.8 uh, tie point. But at that 40 volt distribution, I definitely have distortion. Now, if I bring in the other harmonic, you'll see I start to get even more distortion. So this goes on and on. And so following that path of current, all of the components impact the voltage distor distortion, but then the voltage now impacts everything connected to your internal bus, to that 40 volt bus. So now if we go back to the scenario where we had a space heater, and let's bring that in, now we see its voltage is no longer sinusoidal. 
as a result, its currents no longer sinusoidal as well. Now, in the case of a space heater, it's probably not a big deal. However, when you get other loads, lighting ballasts, across the line motors, um, other switch mode power supplies, UPS systems, you can start to have real impacts on these components and sometimes even resulting in premature failures or communication losses due to, due to the noise. So it can be, become a very problematic issue, and which is why IEEE 519 regulates how much voltage distortion you're allowed to put back onto the lines and so internally within your plant to say you know if you want to deal have high harmonics distorted voltages go ahead but at that tie point the point of common coupling or, or now the metering point um, they specify only a certain level of distortion because of these issues so today we have Kent Wegley with us he's going to answer some questions uh, on his experiences with har harmonics in the field Kent can you give us some examples of harmonics issues that that you've seen some of the effects that I've seen in bad harmonics are, are primarily heat and voltage related. Harmonics affect a lot of auxiliary equipment, um, transformers, switchgear and such, and can cause additional heat, uh, can even cause conductors to, to melt in some cases. Uh, specific site that I've been to, I think one of the, the worst ones was in an AC drive system when the harmonic distortion was present, the unit would trip on over voltage, even though the RMS voltage as measured with a meter was still reading 470 to 480 volts. Uh, the distortion was such with an AC drive system capturing the peak of the waveform, it was rectifying up to about 740, 750 volts, which is far above what a normal sine wave peak would be. Okay, so in your experience, what, what types of equipment are the worst offenders as far as harmonic gen generating harmonic currents? Just about any rectifier system where we're not drawing a linear load is, is going to be an offender. Um, the magnitude and impedance of the system will kind of determine what the worst ones are. I see the, probably the most impact on like DC drives and low voltage rectifier systems for in like plating operations um, where the phase angle for firing is very low, so the displacement, the power factor, is uh, extremely low as well. We're, we're well phase shifted in the voltage and currents. Um, those seem to have the greatest impact on the overall system when the currents are high. Okay, so if I'm a user and I've said, okay, I've got, a, I've got harmonic issues, what's the best approach to mitigate? I mean, do you, do you mitigate the issues at the offending equipment, for example, the terminals to a drive? You know, do you go to the input of your plant where the power comes in? What are your thoughts? There's several ways of mitigating and it depends on what your overall plant structure is and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if the harmonic content within the distribution the system is affecting other equipment in the system, certainly the best place to attack it is at the source, whatever is making that harmonic distortion or creating that harmonic distortion within the system. If you're trying to meet compliance to IEEE 519 and what you're reflecting back to the utility distribution system, um, and it's not affecting other equipment in your plant, you can go to the source and have one source or one, one location fix for a great deal of equipment on a distribution system as far as what your plant is doing. Okay, so it seems that an active front end can virtually eliminate a, a harmonic, certainly the low order harmonics. Now, can you also use an active front end to compensate for the harmonic content being generated by other equipment? To some extent, it depends on the manufacturer of the equipment and what capabilities they have in. Since the active front end system is modulating to the, the line side of the system to draw that current from the line, it can modify its current draw and actively compensate if the system is capable of doing that. Uh, that that's all a matter of the manufacturing, the programming of the unit, as well as the magnitude that you're trying to compensate for. Okay, the other thing we, I've, I've, I've heard is uh, a resonance and that, you know, you have harmonics exciting a resonance. Maybe in layman terms gives us an explanation of what a resonance is and, and how, if you, if you run into this type of problem, you can resolve it? Resonance is a characteristic of any distribution system due to capacitance and inductance that are built into the system just as an effect of physics. Um, and that, that resonance is going to be independent and shifting 
within the system depending on if they have power factor correction, if there's uh, static VAR compensation going on, voltage correction capacitors that are switching in and out. It changes the characteristics and it'll shift that frequency. The best way to do it is to slightly off-tune any filter systems from where that, that resonance is uh, or put some impedance between yourself and the source. The effect of resonance is it's like ringing a bell on the line when switching transients occur. Uh, you'll get a, a high frequency ring or you'll get uh, voltage distortions that are greater than would normally be because that impedance is, is changing at that frequency. Great. Thanks, Kent. You're welcome, Al. Anytime. I think what we've gone, as we've gone through this episode, uh, you know, harmonics are a real issue that can result in real cost to your facility, both in your utility bill and premature failures of equipment that includes both across the line motors, UPS systems, and any other uh, pieces of equipment that are running off of distorted voltages. Quad Plus offers services to ensure uh, IEEE 519 compliance, uh, and, and we can help you if, you if you need to mitigate any circumstances that you have. Just give us a call or send us an email. And as always, if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover in a future video, just send me an email at al at quadplus.com. Thank you for watching. Remember, always work safe, lock out, and tag up.